So one of our viewers sent us uh, a paper written by uh, William T. Kavanaugh, uh, who is a prominent U.S. theologian uh, who was educated at Notre Dame, Cambridge, and Duke Universities. And um, the paper that he wrote, this is actually written in 2006, so we're going back a few years, but um, our viewer who sent us this, his name was Tom, and he specifically requested that we take a look at this and do a little commentary on it, and the title of the paper is, Does Religion Cause Violence? And, um, you know, he actually, the author, Kavanaugh, um, brought up some things that I thought were really interesting. Mm -hmm. And he actually, in a way, he, he convinced me of something um, that it didn't really take a lot of convincing. Um, I pretty much jumped on board right away. But he, his, his, the main crux of his argument is that religions, it's hard to, from a historian standpoint, um, or even perhaps from a theologian standpoint, it's hard to define what a religion is. And, and what he says to that effect is that things like our, um, unbridled nationalism, mm -hmm. like what we saw around uh, World War II and during World War II and like Germany, things like that, the unbridled nationalism is in a way uh, religion because it shares a lot of um, kind of the absolutist thinking and the irrational um, belief structure and um, how it divides people and it puts people securely into groups and, and mm -hmm. makes it us against them. And in that sense, I totally agree with him that um, this sort of like irrational um, belief structures are, are dangerous and, and can um, cause great violence. And the thing that he says is that the reason that it's unfair to say, he calls it the myth of religious violence, is that because of this... Um, it's, it's unfair to say that it's religion that is the thing that drives violence. It's, in fact, these um, irrational belief systems, okay. these ideologies that, that people let get out of control. And, and that is pretty much where um, I end my agreement with him, because mm -hmm. I think that most of the rest of what he says is sort of bullshit. Okay. So, because he makes... He makes some comparisons um, to things like uh, sports team fanaticism. He mm -hmm. says that that could qualify as a religion. And um, in a sense, he's right. But I think where his argument falls apart is that he, he says, okay, nationalism is the equal to religion and football fanaticism is the equal to religion. But okay. here's, here's where I have to disagree with him. Let's take, and I looked this up. Um, and I'm not a baseball fan, so I have no bias here. I'm just trying to, to make a point that the New York Yankees have won more World Series than any other team in baseball. Okay. Um, so this is the baseball championship that we have in the United States for Major League Baseball. Um, they've won it 27 times. Now, based on that, I can probably make a reasonable argument mm -hmm. that, therefore, the New York Yankees are the best baseball team up to this point in history, okay. because they've won more championships than anyone else. That's not an irrational reason to think. And if I'm, if I'm a fanatical fan of the Yankees, I can point to that as a reason, be like, they're the best team because they've won more championships than anyone else. Now, there, I be, there might be other criteria for who's the best baseball team. You could say, and I, this one I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't find a statistic on this quickly, but we could say maybe the Boston Red Sox have a higher win-loss percentage. Mm -hmm. So even though they haven't won as many championships, they've won more games overall. Okay. Um, but again, that's a rational... That's a rational way to look at rational it. So the, the idea, my, my point of bringing this up is that sports team fanaticism, while it could be just, ah, I love this team more than any other team because I was raised in this city, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Mm. Religious belief, I mean, when, you, when you think of the definition of what belief is, mm. faith is... is thinking that something is true even when you have no evidence or in light of evidence to the contrary, mm -hmm. religious belief is always irrational. Nationalism, um, when we think of like the runaway nationalism of the Nazi party and then taking it to this incredible, horrible extreme, yeah, that's bad. But 
nationalism doesn't necessarily have to be an irrational uh, belief system. You could have a belief that um, Chile, which is a country where we get a lot of, uh, uh, when it's winter in the United States, it's actually um, summer in Chile, and so when we go to the grocery store here, a lot of our fruit comes from Chile. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a Chilean person and you say, Chile has the best fruit, and Americans and, and other people enjoy it all, you know, during their winter, and it's, it's the most tastiest fruit, and um, you could actually have some kind of statistics for that kind of justification, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But you can never say about religion that, you know, uh, uh, the, the best comparison that I could think was to say, well, there's more Catholics because uh, the guy who wrote yeah. this paper, Kavanaugh, he, he's Catholic. Um, you could say, well, there's more Catholics than there are any other religion, which is, mm -hmm. as far as I know, there's more than a billion Catholics. It is, in fact, the most numerous religion uh, on the planet, but that's an that's an argument from popularity. Right. That, that's a logical fallacy. It would be like me saying, well, there's more um, New York Yankees fans than there are fans of any other baseball team, and therefore that makes them the best baseball team. That's not the same argument as they've won the most championships. Well, that's, you know, that that's two completely different things. And so I think that's where Kavanaugh's argument sort of starts to fall apart. And mm -hmm. when he... He also kind of, he has this built-in dig on religion in his own paper where he actually says, he, he defines, like, nationalism as a secular religion. Mm. And what he doesn't understand, I think, about that statement is that he's saying nationalism is so dangerous and so bad and so irrational, it's like a religion. Okay. That's like an automatic dig on the thing that he's trying to defend. Yeah. Do you, do you get that? Do you yeah, see I get that, but I mean, I'm still lost at the very, at the very beginning. I, cause I, I don't agree with him that you can, you can make the suggestion that things like nationalism or even having a favorite football team and things like that is a religion. I think the football team is definitely a bit of a stretch, but I think his point is that when we look at things like football teams or baseball teams, if someone is born in Boston and that is their only reason for thinking that the Boston Red Sox is the greatest team in baseball history. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the equivalent of being born in Iran right. and thinking that because you were born there and because you were raised in a Muslim culture, that Islam therefore must be the one true religion. In that sense, it's the same. But, that's, but my point was that uh, the reason that you like a sports team or the justification you give for why a sports team is the best ever doesn't necessarily have to fall in that category, but religion mm -hmm. always does. Because religion doesn't have any evidence. No religion does. Well, many would disagree with you. Well, so, I mean, they, my, they need to present point, that evidence to me because I've never seen it. You have those people accepting that as enough evidence for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and but but you know, to define those the nationalism as similar to religion, I mean, religion has you know, a belief system, a belief mm -hmm. structure, it, it always almost ties to something supernatural. Well, and, and that's I mean, and that's true. It's not it, it's not quite it makes a, claims and it has you know consequences and things for that. Sure. If you you like the Boston Red Sox and you're in, in Miami, it doesn't really have these like you know life altering consequences. That's true. The, but the the he brings up several. He quotes a couple historians and and he brings up the comparisons that the. Um, the historians give for mm -hmm. why say nationalism is the big one. Mm -hmm. uh, he's um, it, that's the big thing that he's he's comparing because he sees nationalism as this secular religion. Some of the things that he brings up is um, that both religion and nationalism have are absolute truth claims, blind obedience, um, establishment of ideal times. Like we're always looking back to this like golden era, uh -huh. you know. Um, the ends justifying the means and um, the declaration of holy war. And he says that nationalism doesn't necessarily have the declaration of holy war, such as the Crusades or, you know, Jihad or something like that. But I, I think it's actually probably, even though he doesn't include it, it's probably a fair estimation because nationalism can kind of come to this point where it's clear that uh, because our country is so great, we're destined to rule the world. Mm -hmm. It's it's a bit different, but I, I could see a comparison there. Um so really, though, from what I'm getting out of this, it seems more like he's saying, I mean, I think that you should differentiate like a religion from a belief structure, and this still sounds like it falls into a, 
more of a belief structure, you know, an extremist belief structure gone awry, but it, I mean, I think it has to have some sort of spiritual ties to be considered, like, a, a religion, to be well, classified as a religion. Well, and that's, and that's what I would think, too, because he comes from this standpoint of the way that he's trying to define religion. He's doing it, I mean, he even admits in, in the paper that he's kind of, the definitions of religion that he's looking for mm -hmm. comes from uh, historians and, like, a consensus of what well-known historians would define religion as, and he admits that it's, hmm. that there are people who are, who they're sort of splitting hairs on the subject. And the thing that he brings up is that we all would accept that Islam and Christianity and Judaism are religions, but because certain types of Buddhism and, say, Confucianism don't technically have a god, he's saying those don't fall under the same umbrella hmm. as, as the three Abrahamic religions. And yeah, so, like so he's saying... When we include like things like Confucianism, then that leads us to a place where we could also include nationalism. I think he's putting too fine a point on it. I think that historians at an academic level, they can argue whether this is a religion or that is a religion. But I think most people in their daily lives, we know a religion when we see it. It mm -hmm. usually comes with a God claim. It usually comes with some kind of spiritual claims. Right. Um, you know, whether Confucianism is or not, like, I'm personally not really worried about that. I don't know, and, and for the purpose of this argument, I don't really know any Confucianists who have caused violence in the name of Confucianism. Um, you know, I understand that Confucianism is more just sort of a philosophy, mm -hmm. in the same way that certain types of Buddhism are just a philosophy and not really a religion. Other types of Buddhism are not. But, so I think he's trying to put too fine a point on it. But, mm -hmm. um, and then... The, the point where I think he totally loses me and he totally falls apart and, and he, he makes a statement that he wants to question the idea that religions are absolutist. Hmm. The, the, the idea that they have absolute truth. And the way that he goes to disprove this is um, I'm embarrassed for him because this is a terrible argument. He, he goes on to say that um, absolute itself is a vague term. Which, no, it's not. Wow. Um, and the way that he shows this is he, he quotes a study where Americans who identified themselves as Christians were asked to um, identify if they were willing to kill for their Christian beliefs or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, over, the overwhelming majority of Christians, probably not surprisingly, said they were in fact not willing to kill for their beliefs. And he points out that this proves that therefore the Christian religion is not an absolutist ideology. And I think this is a total non sequitur. Mm -hmm. Because, just because the people who are living today are not willing to kill for the, for the ideals of their religion has nothing to do with the fact that it makes claims about absolute truth. And the, what the big claim of absolute truth that the Christian religion makes about reality is that if you do not accept the divinity of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you're going to hell. Yeah. And as Christopher Hitchens once uh, brought up, um, just because religion isn't strong now means that we have to forget the kinds of things that religion used to do when it was strong enough, mm -hmm. when it was making people an offer that they couldn't refuse. Mm -hmm. So just because religion's grip on the planet has gotten weaker doesn't make it not absolutist. Mm -hmm. And just even if people aren't willing to do violence for it, doesn't make it. It makes absolute <coughs> claims <coughs> that are, as far as it is concerned, just inviolate. Yeah, because I, I feel like there's a lot of people in Christianity that the reason that they would not kill for that is because that their their priority is accepting you know Jesus into their heart and that's those sorts of things. And they don't need to defend it. There's not as much like de declaration of like if you're not. Christian, then, you know, then we have to correct that. I mean, right. A lot of people become kind of passive about it, where they're like, you know, Jesus will take care of that, or God will take care of that. They'll right. take care of you. Sure. They don't have to be the, like, Im implementers of that truth anymore. Yeah. In, in, in a somewhat good way, but, I mean, you make a valid point, because they certainly used to do a, a lot of that in the past. Right. But the, it's it's interesting to see how the, the, the times and the thought processes have changed. Right. Um, and, and I think, lastly, where he sort of falls apart is he wants to say that religious ideology and secular ideology, possibly things like nationalism, he's saying that the lines blur mm -hmm. and that there's no way to tell which one is which. Which, again, we said, I don't think 
when people see a religion, they know what a religion is. Um, and I think the problem becomes that when people kill for zealous nationalism, mm -hmm. um, they're not actually killing in the name of zealous nationalism. They're killing in the name of their country, mm -hmm. uh, whatever country that, that they think is fantastic. People do actually kill for religion. They kill for the religious ideology. Mm -hmm. You don't say when 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 the Nazis are rounding people up and shooting them. They're not saying we are killing people for the right to hold our nationalist ideology or to defend the the idea that nationalism is an idea that we can hold. I I, got, I might have to disagree with that. Do you I mean, think that people actually kill for the, the framework that is nationalism? I, I, think, I think the idea that, that before you shoot people in an execution line that you're going to state your truest reason for why well, you're doing it. Well, I'm not going to state it. That's my point. I mean, but that's kind of what you're right. almost arguing. No, I'm, I'm arguing that, that's, that their self-justification for why they're doing the killing is not for like the right that they can have a nationalist ideology. Well, it's not necessarily for the right, but a lot of, like, the reason, and, you know, the, my understanding of it, a lot of the reason for, like, all the hate speech against the Jewish people and things like that that motivated the soldiers to... It's actually to religiously actually, based. Well, it's partially religiously based, but it was also all about, I mean, it's it's basically just, you know, uh, hatred spewing, but it's, it's sure. you know, the Jews are, you know, running our banks the wrong way, and they're taking advantage of our country's, fin you know, financial, right. you know, records and all sure. of that kind of stuff. They had... Justifications that affected the country, right? And but affected a lot of the that, purest nature that you know the yeah. it, you know, that Germany was aiming for, right. and they just became the target of like, well, this is the reason things are bad. I mean, they were the Jewish people were essentially scapegoats, right? But, but the I reason still think that they their were goal, the reason that they were a scapegoat, to, was because the Lutheran Church for a very long time preached that Jews, it, it was Jews were who were responsible for the death of Jesus. That's why they became the scapegoat in the first place for I, I all think, these like I secular reasons. I think if you reasons. look back at a lot of what Hitler was actually saying and what he was actually using using to motivate people to divide themselves, it was uh, much more of the the, the national. No, what I'm saying idea. is that's that's where the reason that the Jewish people were the scapegoats in the first place was because of the the baiting that Christian religions in Europe had been doing for a long time already. Partially, like Hitler didn't wake up one day and say, "Hey, you know what? You know what I really hate the Jews." No, no, there was already a system in place mm -hmm. that he had been brought up in that was giving that to him all the time. Right, and he used that to his advantage to propagate his, his war machine. Right. But, I mean, when you actually have the soldiers that were convinced that they were doing the right thing in the name of Germany, essentially, yeah. it was not just because they were doing, like you're saying, they right. weren't saying it because it was right by God even so much as they were saying, this is how we're going to perfect our nation right. and get the, you know, the Aryan race and all those right. kind of ideals. And that's... I think that's you know relates to the nationalism idea that they actually are, def you know, like that they are eliminating these threats... Mm -hmm. To their ideology, uh, ideology. In in my opinion. Right, but well, now you sound like you're agreeing with me. But now now I'm confused. But <laughs> the the and that's and something that Kavanaugh actually brings up in his paper is that um, it's it's impossible usually to separate religion from politics, mm -hmm. and that's and he actually thinks that's that's something that doesn't excuse religion. Mm -hmm. That when you look at something like Nazi Germany. The kinds of things you're saying, it those politics can't excuse religion's hand mm -hmm. in putting those kinds of thoughts like in place. And I think the place, and this is this is the important part because this is where I agree with Kavanaugh. The thing that we can't forget is that irrational ideologies, be they religious or political, right. they are dangerous. Period. What we need to have is rational ideologies. We need to have critical thinking. We need to go over these things. We need to have an open forum where we discuss things to make sure that we don't embark on policies that right. are irrational. I agree and with I think, that. And I think where I disagree with him, to, to sum up, is that religion is always an irrational ideology. Because if they had evidence, I wouldn't be an atheist. And there wouldn't be atheists. There might be people who say, well, I'm not going to worship your God because he's a monster. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't have atheists. But because there is no evidence... It is therefore irrational because the time to believe in a claim is when there's good reason to. Right. And I know that people will jump all over this on the YouTube comments and they say, well, I have this evidence or I have that evidence. Like, 
Well, then you need to show it to me because every theist I have ever talked to has fallen very far short of the mark. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I want to say thanks, Tom. This was a really interesting read to me. And, you know, it actually it, it made me think about um, uh, political ideologies kind of in a different way. You know, I, Kavanaugh definitely has some good points about politics and religion and the interplay and, and um, just irrational ideologies altogether. I think he's wrong on forgiving religion the way that he does, but it was a very interesting paper. Outcasts out.